Lazy loading is an amazing technique that helps to reduce the initial bundle size drastically by splitting your code into chunks that can be loaded separately only when needed. From the view router documentation you know that they suggest lazy loading all of the routes which totally makes sense because you always load one page at a time and you don't need to load the whole application just to show for example the contact page. But did you know that lazy loading technique can be used more than just for routes? Vue provides very nice and convenient API to create such called async components that utilize Webpack's dynamic imports. These components are dynamically loaded only when you render them, which means that initially the component is not bundled with your application and it's split into its own file. You can pass several options to define async component like loading component which is going to be shown while it's loading the dynamic component. You can put for example a spinner there for user experience purposes. So now the main question is where we can actually benefit from this technique. The main idea here is that you can lazy load almost any component that is not visible to the user immediately after he enters the page. The most common and obvious examples can be the dialog boxes, the collapsed sidebars, tab contents, some kind of hidden blocks maybe in your website, and etc. With this idea in mind, let's jump into some examples and see how we can implement lazy loading such components. We will explore two examples which are a simple dialog form and a dynamic navigation. Right now you can see the dialog example rendered and let's test how it actually works. Let's press the button and you can see that it shows a dialog with a spinner and after a few seconds we get the actual form that was successfully lazy loaded. Now if we close and reopen our dialog we get the form instantly because we already loaded the component and it was cached. Now in the components let's open lazy dialog example and see how it's actually built. This component is here just for example purpose which has a simple button that sets the isContactFormVisible variable to true when clicked. And that variable is bound to our actual contact form dialog component whose visibility is controlled through vModel. Next up we have the contact form itself and this is the component that we are actually going to lazy load. It's a trivial example here because we don't have much going on here rather than just markup. But imagine in a real project you have tons of logic in such forms. But here we are just rendering the card with the form elements. While we load our actual form, we want to show some loading component that will inform the user that content is coming. For that we have the contact form loading component, which is basically the same card which is used in the form itself, plus the loading spinner at the center. Very simple. So now comes the interesting part, the contact form dialog where all the lazy loading magic happens. First things first, for the dialog UI component, here I'm using an npm package called viewNeatModel which supports view3 and it uses a vModel to control its visibility. And the first thing I'm doing here is just forwarding the visibility logic transparently up to the parent component. So basically I am accepting a model value prop in the current component which is contact form dialog and passing it to the model. Then I am listening to the update model value event and forwarding the new value up to the parent. So this is how the V model was working in the previous example. Inside the model slot I am conditionally rendering the contact form which we saw before based on the is lazy activated variable which we are going to check in a moment. Down in the script we are importing the viewNeat model related stuff, the define async component that we saw in the introduction as well as the contact form loading component which we will use inside the async component in the loading component field. And finally we have arrived at our contact form component which we are defining as an async component. So we are passing two parameters here. The first one is the loader, which is the actual component that will lazily load, and it must be a function that returns an import. Secondly, we are passing the loading component, which we are setting it just to contact form loading. So the view will know to show that loading component 
while our real component is loading. In the data, we have a single variable, which is that boolean, which decides whether our lazy component must be loaded or not. In the props, we're accepting a model value, which we're passing at the top to the model component. And now we can make use of this visibility prop to set our isLazy activated variable the first time when the dialog is opened. And we do that down here in the watcher, where we watch the model value and when it changes to true, and if the lazy variable is still false, we just set it to true and we're good to go. So to sum up, what is going to happen is that whenever the dialog is opened, and if it's the first time we set the lazy variable to true, which triggers the rendering of our lazy component, it will in turn show the loading component, and finally when the form is fully fetched, it will render it inside our dialog. Now that's going to be it for the dialog example, and without a further ado, let's jump into the next one. Here in the app view, I have switched the example to lazy navigation. In this example, we are going to have something called dynamic async loading. What do I mean when I say dynamic? Because the async import function receives a string as a parameter, we can benefit from this and interpolate dynamic variables into our load paths. Here in the example, we have a JavaScript list navigation where each list item opens a some kind of editor or form on click. And what we want here is to dynamically load every component that list items open so that each click on the list item loads only its own component. And this is a good scenario when we can use dynamic paths because we have shared logic of loading the components. Now, without wasting any time, let's jump into our lazy navigation example. Here we are rendering a basic markup with some bootstrap list items. First of all, we have a UL that is being dynamically shown and hidden based on the current field variable that we are gonna look in a second. So basically what we are seeing here is that whenever we have an active field, then we don't want to show the navigation. Next up inside the UL, we are looping through fields array, which is an array of objects which have a label and the name of the component that we will be loading. Also at the bottom, we are attaching a click event to each element and setting the current field variable to that field. So we can track the current active field and load the component appropriately. Inside each element, we have some basic markup and the label that is being rendered in the span. Moving further down the template, we have the gray back button that you saw in the example. And again, we are dynamically hiding and showing it based on the current field. But in this case, we are inverting the logic and saying we want to show this button only when we have an active field. And in the click handler, we are just setting our current field to null, which will close the field. Finally, at the bottom, we have our lazy component that we are rendering in a specific way. Here, we are making use of Vue's dynamic component called component that accepts an isprop, which takes a whole component and renders it. This way, we can dynamically update our editor component variable, which you can see here, and Vue will render that for us. We are also adding a vif so that we are only rendering the component if we have one. In the script part, we are first again importing the define async component as well as editor loading component, which is basically the same spinner you saw in the first dialog example. Here in the data, we have those variables that were used in the template, which are the current field that is set to null initially, and the fields array, which as I said earlier, holds objects that contain label and editor component. Now, what are these editor component properties that are set to editor 1, 2, and 3? Let's find out. In the computed properties, we have a single entry, which is editor component that you saw in the template at the bottom. Basically, here we are dynamically generating the async component based on the current field variable. First, we are checking if we don't have any current field. If we don't have, then we are just returning null so nothing is going to be rendered. But if we have one, then we are grabbing the editor component property from it, which is actually the name of the component that we are loading. 
and in the importing part I am interpolating that name so in the runtime we will end up with paths like editor slash editor1 for example. And the components themselves are located in the same directory under editors folder. The editors themselves for the sake of example are just simple templates with a single diff. But you can imagine that each of these components have tons of logic that you don't want to be loaded when you don't need. You can notice that the names of the components match those that are in the fields array under editor component. So now you might have a question about how does Webpack handles these dynamic paths where we use variables that are not available at compile time. And there is a reason why I have put the word dynamic in the quotation mark. What Webpack actually does is it looks at your import and splits every file under the static path into a separate file. In our case, Webpack would split away all the files under editors folder because it can see that we are only loading components from that folder. This is very important and you should be really careful here because if you for example make whole path dynamic like this one where you have the source directory and then some dynamic path and then slash another dynamic path, then what Webpack will do is code split your whole project and each file recursively that we obviously don't want. To sum up, code splitting is an amazing technique that you should utilize more and more in your projects. It will make a huge difference in load times and performance in a bigger projects.